As we continue to share some of the Magnify team's favorites this month, this pick has really got me thinking. Last year, we did a series on peacemakers, and one of the traits we chose to focus on was meekness. And some thoughts might be coming to your mind right now, like church mouse or pushover, but Shima Boffman explained on that episode that meekness is strength. In fact, that was the title of this episode. Social media designer Anna Owens shares her thoughts on Shima's episode and how she's working to be more meek by being receptive and teachable. Okay. Hi, Anna. So thanks for being here. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, who you are on the Magnify team. Okay. I'm Anna. I am a graphic designer and I make all of our visual graphics and videos for Magnify. So we get to make things colorful and happy and pretty. Thank you for coming and sharing one of your favorite past episodes. So this month we've been doing picks from our favorite episodes. We've had so many wonderful episodes and contributors that have shared really wonderful insights. And so tell us about your pick and why it resonated with you. Tell us the episode you, you've chosen. I picked Meekness's Strength with Shima Boffman, and I picked it because it totally changed my perspective. This, like you said, was part of our Peacemaker series a while back, and she talks about how being meek doesn't necessarily mean you have to be timid or quiet. And then it actually means that you're strong. And before she had like formulated all these ideas and shared these ideas, I didn't see myself as someone who was meek. But this totally changed my perspective on how I can be meek and how being willing to be teachable is such a strength. I resonate with this. I feel like I don't see myself as somebody meek either, right? (laughs) And I feel like people who are meek, I'm kind of like jealous of because I've got a bold personality, (laughs) right? So I like this pick. I think that where there's the title of the episode is literally meekness is strength. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'm strong. Right. And I also think like when you have a bold personality or lots of opinions, you kind of sometimes get told you have a strong personality and sometimes that has a negative connotation. And so I loved this idea that you can have a strong personality and be meek and have it all flow together to be a good thing. Well, take us into this first soundbite. Okay, so Shima starts off and she shares this quote from Elder Bednar. He said that being meek means being willing to learn. And then she gets into this story of Mary that profoundly explains this statement. So let's listen to Sheena explain it. Somebody who's been, you know, on my mind recently because I am pregnant is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And, you know, she had a very obviously miraculous birth. And and for my family, our, our little, a little miracle for us has been just me being pregnant at, at my age and, and just with all the circumstances we've gone through. One of the things that was so neat and, and the lesson she, I feel like, teaches us about meekness. So, you know, an angel tells her she's pregnant before a wedding day and we often take it kind of like, isn't that so beautiful? Isn't she so blessed? But you think about Mary getting that kind of quote unquote miracle in her day, in her culture. I mean, that would have caused so much shame for her. It would have ruined her engagement, right? To be pregnant uh, without a father, right? At that point, Um, she was a virgin. She would have been cast out of her community. Her betrothed would have rejected her. And in fact, I don't think we often realize this, but when she goes and stays with her cousin Elizabeth while she's pregnant, it's likely because her community would not have understood that she's pregnant by an act of God and would have shamed her, right? But I look at her response when, when you know, the instant she gets this message and what she says in Luke one thirty eight, she says, let it be to me according to thy word. And it like goes back to your quote where she says, humility to depend on the Lord. She's just depends on him completely and shows this great meekness. I think it's neat because it extols the the virtues of meekness in the sight of the Lord. And it's such a great lesson for us. It's not being a doormat, right? Being meek. It's following God's plan for us. And that's what she really does. And I think it's such a great lesson. And I think sometimes as women, we are planners and maybe it's harder for us and maybe it's not, but maybe it's just me. It's sometimes hard to just resign my will and have that humility depend on the Lord, as you know Patricia Holland says, without reservation. But I feel like when you when you think about Mary, that's exactly what she does, and it was much different, I'm sure, than she had imagined. Obviously, much better in the long run. But she is able to see it, and you know, says, "Let it be to me according to Thy word." And I just think that's such a great motto for for life. I wish we could channel that more. I wish I could channel that more. Love that soundbite. Wow. Shima really kind of just knows how to 
how to tie certain concepts together. I really, really connected to when she was talking about how she's a planner because I'm a planner. I love a list. I love a calendar, paper, or digital. (laughs) And I just like to have a plan. It's comforting to me. And so when I feel like I'm not necessarily in control, especially of things that like I have to trust God on, that can be really uncomfortable. Relinquishing my will to the Lord without reservation is probably one of the hardest challenges for me. And it's actually a life lesson that I feel like I have to learn over and over and over again, you know? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I know, Anna, you and I've talked about this a little bit. What are you kind of doing or what are, what are you hoping to get that like you can get to that mindset of relinquishing your will to the Lord because you know that his ways are better? I think it's all about, for me at least, it's about remembering that he is my teacher. And with every time I have to relinquish my will to the Lord, he's going to teach me something that's going to make me stronger or happier. And it might be really uncomfortable, but in the end, I am going to learn. And so as I've thought about it, I kind of have tried to shift my mindset to being as excited to learn life lessons from God as I always was about the first day of school growing up. Like I was always so thrilled and just jazzed on the first day of school. I loved learning. I still do. But you know, when you're a kid, you'd like pick out your outfit and have all your books. Like I said, I love stationery, you know. And so I'm just trying to be that excited about learning from God and knowing that he really does have my back, just like, you know, my kindergarten teacher did. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that analogy too, because I feel like you said the Lord is your teacher. How much more exciting does that perspective sound where it's like, we're in the school of life. We just have this chance to go out and learn from the greatest teacher ever. It's so much more exciting, especially because we always like say the school of life and it kind of can be a little bit cliche, you know, (laughs) but it gives it more of a tangible perspective to me and makes me feel like, okay, I can be optimistic even when things are hard. (laughs) Like I really can do it. It's going to be okay. You know? Okay. Well, speaking of that and staying optimistic, can you sort of take us to this next part that Shima shared that you loved? Yeah. So Shima Next, she's going to share something interesting about how avoiding comparison can bring us more meekness and help us be happy for others. And she just explains in a way I hadn't ever thought of before. So let's take a listen. I like that part where you, where you said he readily, you readily acknowledge the accomplishments of others. Like, it's okay that others have, you know, beautiful other paths that aren't yours and not comparing ourselves to others. I think that's an interesting... Is that hard for you? Uh, yes, it is. And I think actually... It's really hard for everyone. I think, you know, once I recognize that that's, it's a human natural part of our lives. So I don't know if you read the book, Righteous Mind by, by Jonathan Haidt. He's a professor at Virginia, but it really did make me feel better about it because I think our natural inclination is to compare ourselves to others. And we all do this. there's, There's no one excluded from this human desire to to be like others, to compare themselves to others, to be envious, to be jealous. It's going to be hard for all of us to readily recognize and be so happy for others every time when they succeed in things that especially we want to succeed in or we're failing in. I don't think it's possible not to feel them. And I think sometimes we beat ourselves up or try to repress those feelings. Like, I don't feel envious. I I never am envious of anyone. (laughs) It's like, well, maybe you're not, but I know I am. And and Mormon says we all are because the natural man is is how we are. (laughs) And that's why we have to fight it. That's why we need Jesus Christ, right? It's like if we were all just perfectly able to feel like happiness for others' accomplishments every time, I I mean, maybe some people are, and and I'm just not, and I'm just weak, but I I think all of us struggle in some ways. Well, and I think that what a beautiful way to be meek is to readily acknowledge the accomplishments of others. Just being happy for others, that that truly is an attribute of meekness. And that might not be easy and that might not come naturally for a lot of us, Mm -hmm. but I think there's power in that. And I love in Alma 37, 33, where it talks about when you are meek, you have this peace in Christ that, and that the meek and lonely in heart will find rest to their souls. And I, I feel like it's like the opposite of comparison and this like kind of angst that humans have naturally, but we can have this meekness God can help us all get this and we have this rest and peace in Christ. And isn't that just like what all women strive for in life? (laughs) 
Okay, I'm kind of thinking back to our other series, like the other episodes in the Peacemakers series. And in fact, Elle shared this one earlier this month about Tammy and that like encouraging others is, it's a quote from President Nelson, the best is yet to come for those who spend their lives building up others. And I think Shima's kind of getting at that same sentiment here, right? Like readily acknowledging the accomplishments of others and not comparing yourself, which is so hard to do as women. Completely. And I also love that she emphasized the importance of acknowledging beautiful paths, that your path can be beautiful and so is theirs because it's unique to you. Um, I think as we try to make our lives the best that we can, it's really hard not to compare ourselves. I mean, obviously, Shima kind of touched on that too. We feel like we need some form of standard to measure up to. But as I've been kind of thinking about this and trying to figure out how do I avoid comparison and just shift it so that I'm not comparing and instead readily acknowledging this idiom that you always say, because you're an idiom resident (laughs) expert, um, always comes to my mind, all ships rise with the tides. And I really love that because someone told me the story a long time ago about how everyone is in their own boat in this life. We're all in the same sea. We're all in the same life, but we all have different experiences, different access to things, and different strengths and weaknesses, right? So in one situation, I might be really prepared for the sea that we're in. I might have like kind of a yacht because I'm, I have the skills for this, but then, (laughs) you know, someone else like my brother, who's completely different from me or a friend or whatever, he might have like a little tiny raft because he's never done this before and vice versa. I might have a raft in a situation where you have a yacht, et cetera. As I think about this, how we all have our own boat, but we're in different ships nonetheless, they're all still rising. And so I can be happy when you have a yacht because you get to rise just like I do. It might be a little harder for me, but then my path will turn and it will be beautiful nonetheless. So as I think about that, it just helps me to avoid the comparison. Well, I love that my idioms reached you (laughs) because that is kind of my thing. I do love, I do love a metaphor. (laughs) Okay. Well, Anna, what's the final part of Shima's discussion that you wanted to share with us? The final part is my favorite part. She finishes with the perfect wrap-up, which comes from the title, Meekness is Strength. I love how she puts it. How have you been able to find that meekness can be a strength? I think when you really understand the scriptural, the biblical definition of meekness and what our apostles are trying to teach us about it, I think that's where I understand what it really means. Because I think in the world of litigation, I I think there's a lot of contention and bad feelings. And I think people sometimes let that come into their lives. And I think that's not a world that I've been instructed well on meekness (laughs) or my world as a law professor, where I think I've really had to kind of actively try to train myself not to think that I know things that I can't be taught by my four-year-olds in my primary class. So I think the, the best lesson for me and the way I try to maintain meekness or learn more about meekness is through watching my savior first as my main example, trying to live my life the way he did. To me, developing meekness is developing confidence. And you think just because you're confident and accomplished and well, even wealthy or all these things, it doesn't mean you can't be me because you think of, you know, President Nelson as the, I think he's such a great example of meekness. And I mean, think of how prominent he is in the world, right? As a heart surgeon and all these things. Yet we have examples of him at General Conference. President Monson challenged him to read the Book of Mormon every day. He does it. President Spencer W. Kimball challenges him to learn Chinese and he goes and does it right? Our prophet is such a great example of meekness. And we're so lucky in this time right now where I think we desperately need meekness in our world. Something I learned as well as I was studying this is when you read in Moroni 7, if anyone, I don't know if anyone caught this, I hadn't caught this before. One of the things it says is you can't have faith and hope without meekness. And I just, it never occurred to me that like the foundation, you think of faith, hope, and charity are like the traits we're trying to admire, you know, get especially charity. But but you don't get faith even without meekness. And so Mormon really saw meekness as this evidence of strength. And it seems like meekness is not coming from any external motivation. It just seems like it comes from an internal understanding of our relationship with the Savior. Yes. And I really do believe that if we want to feel good and have this confidence about ourselves, right? 
it, it has to come from God. And it's, it's, I call it divine esteem. It's like your goodness you have all comes from God. It's not self-esteem. I think people think, oh, like my confidence comes from within. And there's so much self-love right now in this, in the world and discussion of, oh, how do you love yourself? And, you know, it comes from within, but I'm like the source of divinity comes from within. And so, if, like you said, it's, it has to be with this relationship with your savior and with your heavenly father. That's how you get this beautiful, unending d- source of confidence and love and peace, because you're not always going to get praise from others, but from God, if you continue to do as well, and you, you're with God, I think that that divine esteem is unending. Okay. Interesting. Anna, divine esteem. I kind of forgot this part about that um, conversation that Shima had. What does divine esteem mean to you? I've thought so much recently about this. I think a few months ago, my self-esteem was in a place where I just wasn't happy with it. I wanted to improve my self-esteem. And as I did so, I kind of like looked towards self-love and that helped me a little bit. But when I really made the connection that if I looked upwards to God for affirmation and reminders that I was on the right path, I was filled with so much more rest and peace and truly confidence in myself. Elder Suarez, he talks about covenant confidence, and I love that too. I love the idea that because we are divine and we have that connection with God when we're willing to trust him and learn from him and follow his path, we can be confident in ourselves because we know we're doing what's best for us. And we also can be confident in God because we know he's going to keep his covenants with us. I think a lot about a line from our manifesto that says, let us relax into the surety of our faith. And I think I personally would add to my own manifesto, let us relax into the surety of our divinity, that you, you are perfect in your imperfections. You have imperfections and they're part of you. That's part of who you are divinely created to be. And the process of figuring out how to strengthen your weaknesses is how we become like more fully our divine selves. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's interesting and profound. I like that. Relax into the surety of our divinity. We probably, that would probably bring about a lot more meekness into our lives in that strength way that Shima shares. Totally. As I relax into my divinity, I find that I am more willing to relinquish my will to the Lord and to Heavenly Father and to follow their path for me because it's so much more comforting to know that I'm not alone in it. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for sharing with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been so fun. Okay. Well, Anna, because you're part of the social media team, you're doing some design, obviously, for it. Tell us what we could look forward to or sell us on why we should all be over on the Instagram channel. One, because it's our community, but two, the beautiful designs you've been working on are fun to look at every day, right? It is fun. And it's also fun to connect with our community of women. It's so inspiring and empowering to hear from women who are in this gospel living with us and trying to magnify their influence. That's the funnest part of it for me. I love the design, but I also just love hearing the stories from women who are trying to strengthen their faith just like I am. So we'll hope to see you there. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.